it's time to shift geology into overdrive with the brand new Lunar Rover. Engineers began working on lunar cars in the early 1960s. But it was mostly a project in guesswork, since no one had been to the moon. Early engineering, like, let's design a car for an environment we know absolutely nothing about. That takes a certain amount of hubris, but hubris is where it begins. Early models were too heavy, too big, or too unwieldy. Plus, there was no way to get them to the moon. The lunar module had limited storage space. Engineers finally came up with an ingenious idea, a collapsible car. It fits inside a segment of the lunar module and unfolds with a lanyard. To keep astronauts from bouncing off, NASA installs tow holes and a seat belt. Engineers also literally reinvent the wheel. There's no exact knowledge about what you would be going over. So the wheels had to be flexible and transformable. What they came up with is using a mesh of basically steel wire, the kind of wire that you use in a piano, woven on a, a loom, formed into a cylinder, and then wrapped around a hub so that it forms sort of a shape of a tire. The nice thing about being woven is that it comes back basically to the shape it was before. Okay. Okay, that's good. Roger. The rover is a game changer for the next mission, Apollo 15. They hit top speeds of six miles an hour. But on the moon, that's a wild ride. Ben, this is really a rock and roll ride, isn't it? Your heading is beautiful. Continue on. It was a very strange sensation to drive on the moon. It was almost like being in a rowboat on a choppy sea. 